Hi everyone, welcome to Saving the Past. I am GD. Well, today is Monday, April 13th, 2020. It is currently 5.07 a.m. Rocky Mountain Time. Um, I'm going to go over the charts real quick with you folks, uh, but then stick around because I've got uh, just a very brief thing that I want to discuss with you that uh, I think is uh, kind of interesting. It's about the future of gold and silver mining and um, how it could possibly affect uh, supplies in the future. But First, I want to say thank you everyone for being here for me and I hope that you're all staying safe uh, under the circumstances. I hope you had a good weekend, a good holiday weekend. And um, let's hope that we're going to get this over quickly. Uh, currently, it is snowing here in Colorado. It has been snowing for several days. It's supposed to snow all this week. Uh, it's been close to a month since I've been out for supplies. I still have enough supplies to last me for a little while, but um, I have uh, an illness that makes many foods uh, a problem for me to eat, and most of what I have on hand right now are a problem. I had been hoping to get out this week to pick up some more supplies because the virus is spreading in our area, so I wanted to pick up anything else that I possibly could. And I was thinking of doing that tomorrow, but it's supposed to still be snowing tomorrow, so uh, I don't know if I'm going to get a Wednesday video in or not, because we're supposed to have a little break in the snow on Wednesday morning, uh, but we shall see. Okay, well, enough of that. Let's get on to what's going on here. Um, Right now, silver is at, let's just see here, we are at 1528. We opened at 1540. We had a high of 1548 and a low of 1512. Well, we still have an upward um, <clears throat> pattern going on here, but I think we hit a wall here around 1550, 1555, I believe it was, that we hit on April 7th. And 1554 we hit on April 9th. So I think that's going to be resistance here for a little while. And I think we probably are going to either still continue seeing a sideways pattern here or a pullback. I don't expect a major pullback if we get one here. Uh, so we probably have a floor somewhere around 14. Uh, at least uh, based on the information that's out there right now. It's very difficult to read uh, what's going to happen here at this point because some areas of the country are starting to show improvement and other areas like here in Colorado are, are seeing an upslope in problems again. But let's go down here and take a look at these two um, indicators here. The MACD is still showing that this is in positive territory, but the relative strength is starting to turn back down again. This is on a daily chart. Let me go look at a monthly chart here real quick. When we look at the monthly chart here, um, <clears throat> we've had a sideways pattern going for quite some time here. Uh, with the exception of that big drop we took here. So uh, I really do not see any major moves upward anytime soon. Uh, we've got it uh, uh, on the monthly chart. We've got the MACD starting to show that it's going to start going negative here. Uh, but again, on the daily chart, we're showing we're probably going to stay within a sideways pattern here for a little while or a small pullback, but I do not expect any moves upward on this right now until we start getting better news out there that uh, the economies around the world are going to start getting back to work again. But let's go take a look at the gold chart here. Uh, on the gold chart, we have a we are turning back down again. Let's see, we are currently at 1688.10. We opened at 1663. We hit a high of 1693.40 and a low of 16.63, and I do believe Friday's uh, high is probably going to be a cap here for a little while. We hit 1694.90 uh, on Friday for a high, and I do believe we hit a high pretty close to that 
here not long ago. It looks like we were in the 16, uh, we hit 17.03.60 back on March 9th. So I think 17 is probably going to be a resistance level here for a little while. Uh, when we go down and look at the MACD, it is uh, extremely positive, but on the relative strength, it is starting to turn down again. So I think we're probably going to see that as a cap. I think we've got pretty decent resistance down here, probably in the 1650 level. We, level, we hit a low of 1640.80 back on April 8th. Uh, and we hit some highs here uh, in March of 1645.50. And 1643.10. So I think that's probably going to offer us some fairly decent support in that 1650 range. So we're probably going to bounce around for a little while between 1650 and 17. Uh, will these metals both break out here? Well, my thinking is is probably well. First of all, until we actually get any kind of clarification as to when the economy is going to come back again. Gold is still going to be the metal that's going to hold up the best. Silver is going to have a rocky road here um, over these next couple of months until the economy starts getting rolling again. But I still think that we're probably going to be in a similar pattern that uh, we often see, and that is during the spring months, gold and silver kind of just flop around for a little bit. And during the summer, we often get a little boost again. So... I have a funny feeling that we're still going to be doing that, although this summer we may see a bigger increase in the price of silver than we normally would expect, and that'll probably be because we will start getting the economy moving again at that point, and there'll be a lot of high hopes for what the future is going to bring. Anyway, I just wanted to go over this briefly with you folks today. I, I don't see a lot of concern for a lot of downside um, in gold. Uh, I do fear a little bit with silver here still. Uh, if we don't get this economy moving again around the world here pretty soon, uh, silver could wind up taking another big drop before this is all over. But in any case, um, I still recommend that you hold off on paying those high premiums because it'll be a little bit difficult trying to get back out of those metals down the road because of the resistance levels that are going to be up above. Uh, metal will stop, start coming back onto the market again, and those premiums should start coming back down again. So I think that gap between uh, spot prices and physical prices will close up. Now, will they close up to the point? Will we wind up having a big move up in um, spot prices and the uh, physical metal prices come down to where they were before and it winds up putting us close to where you're paying now? I can't answer that question. I just know that I've got to play the odds for myself. And that is, is that I know we've got strong resistance levels up above and I don't wish to be paying right now for a price that's above those resistance levels. So... For me, I'm holding out unless something special comes along locally where I could buy it that's more reasonable. Okay, folks, stick around. Let me discuss uh, something else with you I think that's interesting, and there'll be some links down below uh, for what I'm going to discuss here, and I encourage you to take a look at them. I think you'll enjoy it. Okay, let me get set up for that. The future of mining gold and silver, as well as other rare elements, may look very different in the future. In December of 2019, President Trump established the U.S. Space Force and recently has signed an executive order that allows companies to mine outer space, including the moon as well as asteroids. One such company that was created in 2009 by billionaires Peter DeMantis and James Cameron called Arcid Astronautics was on a mission to explore the possibilities of mining space. And in 2012, they revealed their plans under the new name, Planetary Resources. Well, in 2018, Planetary Resources was acquired by Consensus. So will the vision of the Planetary Resources founders be carried on by the new company? 
to mine outer space or will other companies step forward to complete the mission? Another thought comes to mind and that is, was the Space Force created to protect the U.S. interest in such projects? Time will tell, but one thing is for sure and that is that the finite supply of gold and silver here on planet Earth may one day be eclipsed by new discoveries from space. Maybe this will be the answer to having enough precious metals in stock to allow the world to reintroduce a currency backed by gold once again in the not so distant future. Well, folks, I, I do hope that um, you take a look at some of the links I have down below down there. I've got a few links there um, relating to some articles that are pretty interesting. One's from Mining Technology. Um, uh, Dot com. Another one is uh, from, uh, let's see, what did I have there? I had, oh, the U.S. Space Force uh, website, which is, uh, I believe, going to be adding new information each day as it comes available. And there's the announcement of the change of ownership for planetary resources. And there's a couple of very interesting videos that I posted down below that um, discuss asteroids and um, the types of minerals that can be found on them. So I, I think that there's some interesting reading there and I think this is an interesting thought when we look into the future of uh, what gold and silver mining may be like someday. Uh, will this wind up being something that floods the market with gold and silver? I doubt very much that we will see that in our lifetimes uh, but there is an awful lot of space out there to be mined. And if only a very small percentage um, of those asteroids have actually physical gold and silver on them, then um, that can amount to quite a bit of metal. But in any case, I think it's very exciting what the future holds for the precious metals community. Maybe next time around, <clears throat> We won't have such a collapse in the price, the uh, spot price of gold and silver and such a ridiculously high premium price in it because there'll be enough material available to go around. Okay, folks, I hope you enjoyed this little, um, this little talk that I had here today. And I appreciate that each and every one of you follow me with through all my videos uh, I really do appreciate that thank you very much and to all of you that are new to my channel thank you welcome to to uh, saving the past I appreciate it okay folks um, I hope you're all having a great day today and I look forward to seeing what your comments are down below and I encourage all of you to uh, leave comments it's uh, really great to see what your thoughts are each time I produce one of these videos Okay, until next time, have a great day. This is GD. Take care.